Hello, I'm Cliff and this is my shed. I've been thinking for a while about making a ball turning attachment for the lathe. And let me zoom in and I'll show you the bits I've gathered to do it. So, this is my cross slide. Took the top slide off. I've got this hole in the middle of it, it's a my for ML7 this lathe. I've got this bit of steel that I'm going to clean up on the mill. The plan is put that on there, drill some holes, tap the cross slide so I can bolt that on there. Drill a bigger hole in the top of this bit of steel. Turn this bit of round stock I've got after I've faced it. Put it on there so it goes in the hole. Fix it from underneath. Bolt that onto there. We've got this bit of steel from a from a fouled project. I'm going to cut the tool holder out of this and I've got these tungsten bits that I'm going to try and set into this to make a ball turner. So first thing we'll get to the mill and square up the uh, plate for the bottom. Okay, so here we are at the mill. My mill is a Warco WM14. So I've got the vice trammed up to within a couple of thou, which is good enough for this. I only really want to clean the ends up and square this up. It's, uh, it's not critical. So I'm going to have to close the guard over now. Then I'll switch him on. We'll touch it off and get going. Right, I'm just going to touch it off. That's about it. Unfortunately when I did this power feed I only got a 25 RPM motor which is fine for actually milling but when you're going backwards and forwards with it it's a bit of a pain. A big pain actually. Okay. Let's change that to inches. Bring that back to right, that's zero, so we'll put a uh, five foul on it. Yep, five foul. Y axis off, speed it up a little bit. Uh, these markings on it are from another job, they're not what I want to do. So I'm just going to give it a quick measure up. Not that the size is critical at all, I just want to see how square it is. Okay, that's the first bit. I'm going to blue it up now, mark the centre, and we'll draw some holes. Alright, so I've squared the edges up, and I'm just going to scribe a couple of lines from corner to corner. Need to put my glasses on. Just to find the centre, again, not critical. Just 
uh, just a couple of just a couple of lines corner to corner just to find the centre and then I use the other lines to mark some holes to mount it on the cross slide but I was having a rethink on it I was going to mount the cutter holder block the swivelly bit directly into this but I've got some old bearings in my workshop I've got this one that I think I took out of a router so I thought if I can get a nice tight press fit into that and the same with the, the cutter block for want of a better name for it into that one that would make it definitely move smoother so I'm going to try that and if I, if I don't get a decent tight fit into that I'll just put the cutter block directly into it so I'm going to mount this in the lathe to bore it drill it and bore it I would do it in my mill but I ain't got a boring edge yet which is a shame but uh, I'll mount it up and we'll carry on Right, so here it is, I've got it mounted in my four jaw chuck. I just used the towel stock centre to centre it on a centre punch mark on the mark I've made. Um, it's quite an old chuck I've got. Now, I'm not too bothered about it being off centre, off centre, but what I am worried about is how flat these jaws are, because if I do put this bearing in, it's if that's not nice and flat on this surface. In fact, I think I'll go try and indicate it just to see how flat it is. I've got the clock on now. Not bad actually, it's about three hundredths of a millimetre out. Which somewhere slightly less than a thousandth, so I'm not gonna get it better than that. Right, well I'm just going to centre drill it and then put a 5 eighths hole through it a bit of jollop on him
Right, that's through. I should put a cutting bit on now. A boring bar. Let's see if we can cut it out accurate to the bearing. <laughs> 